Dreams are a universal language, creating often elaborate images out of emotional concepts. So did you get that definition in the opening clip? Dreams are a universal language. Welcome to another episode of Crazy Psychology. Scientists have not yet figured out a way to define our consciousness, our waking state, our present perception of the things around us. The thing that we are most aware of, our conscious state, lacks a scientific definition. So it kind of befuddles me why psychologists and academics and philosophers and writers continue to try to define what dream states mean. They keep making up lists. Here are seven common dream meanings. Of what dreams mean. Now yeah, that's, that's made up stuff. But that doesn't mean that dreams are meaningless. It's just that there's no scientific way to examine them and say this means that and that means this and no. You could make up your own stuff. And dreams are fun and we love to make up stuff about them. So let's look at some real dream experiences. My girlfriend, Boo Cow, who anybody who's been watching my videos has, well, just look at my thumbnails. She's all over them. She's quite a cutie. She has a 13 year old daughter who's been living with me for nearly six years now. And I've become a father figure to the young lass. I've quite fallen in love with her too. I view her more as a grandchild than a daughter, but you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful to have uh, an influence on a young child like that. Well, she went to sleep a few nights ago and she woke up really upset. The following morning, she had a dream that I died. I could see why that would upset her. Can we dream about you? Boo cow derived the meaning of that dream almost instantly. Buakau took my age, 71, and placed a bet on the number 71. And not being a dummy, she also reversed it and bet on the number 17 as well. People who play numbers tend to do that. They want to kind of cover their bases. Show you, show you, show you. Seven one two hundred baht. Two hundred baht. Yes. How much you win? Uh twelve thousand. You won twelve thousand baht. Yes. She won. She won about three hundred fifty U.S. dollars. So, I want you to go tell Bull Cow the meaning of a death dream from one of these made-up lists that academics actually engage in. That's what freaks me out. It's like real scientists, and they've been doing it for a while, Carl Jung, who was a famous psychiatrist back in the 1930s and 40s, uh, Sigmund Freud, and on. there's a long, long list. They're just two names that most people might, uh, might have heard of. That's why I mentioned them. They've all taken a stab at identifying dreams. Now, toward the end of the video, I'll tell you some good science out there about dreams, but it's not gonna be what you think. But once I tell you, you might have an intuitive kind of notion that it's correct. For now, I want to move on to one of my dreams that just happened the night before last. I dreamt that there was this guy that I was observing. I, I don't remember the details, but I, 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 I wrote a little story about this when I woke up because it was such an interesting dream to me. And I called the character in the dream D because he looks like Tweedledee. D, and Tweedledum. Uh, if you think we're wax wax, you ought to pay, you know. And he had an identical twin in the dream. Now, I didn't call the identical twin dumb. I called him Horace. It's a dream. I can make up whatever I want about it. And uh, D and his identical twin brother had like a superpower. They had an extra sensory smell perception. Their smell, you know, what they smelled in the world, out in the environment, their olfactory senses 
were kind of like supercharged. They could smell colors. They could smell things that we might see. They could smell, you know, regular aromas that were, you know, much more detailed and nuanced to them. They were kind of like a cross between a bloodhound and a human. They were also very introverted, but that might be because they look like Tweedledee and Tweedledum. I don't know. The dream didn't go into that. The only thing that the dream went into was that, that they had this super power olfactory sense that they could smell stuff that's going on and almost see and intuit everything about the smell would tell them what's going on in the world. Not too far-fetched. As I said, bloodhounds have this crazy kind of ability to smell stuff. So imagine, you know, kind of bringing that through human perception. I thought it was kind of cool. I'm trying to learn. I, I do some writing too. And I have a, a story that I started not too long ago about consciousness prior to the Big Bang when everybody was smooshed together in a singularity. That's a long story and off the topic. But I kind of like that story. And this might be chapter two. We'll go on to uh, D, the guy with the superpower smell. That, that, that's my dream. Where is that on, on, on the scientist list? <laughs> Good luck with that. The only real science that I know that's been done in the area of dream research is a study using uh, rats. Uh, scientists deprived rats of REM sleep. REM sleep, sleep, REM is an acronym that means rapid eye movement. And sleep researchers have said that our deepest sleep where we dream the most, when that's happening, when people are observing the sleeping subject, they could see their eyeballs moving underneath their eyelids. And that's where the term came from, rapid eye movement. So sleep researchers have associated uh, those two things together, a deep state, state of sleep with rapid eye movement. I'll pick that apart in a future video because I've had experiences, a lot of experiences to the opposite. When I was a fireman in New York City, we would get to sleep on the job on our 24-hour tours, but you didn't sleep very much, not in my firehouse. It was a very busy place. So you would get a little bit of sleep, and as you dozed off, I could hear things going on around in the firehouse, and if an alarm came in, I was instantly awake. Usually the sounds of the alarm coming in were incorporating into my dreams. Wait a minute. I thought dreams happened when you were in a deep state of sleep. And that happened to me many, many times. So I'm gonna pick that apart in a future video, but I'm getting a little off the topic here, which is this uh, experiment with rats. They deprived them of REM sleep and found that the rats that were so deprived were not as good at learning mazes as the rats that slept normally. So the conclusion was, is that dreaming has something to do with learning. That's a simple experiment. There have been others that have replicated that. Like I said in earlier videos, good science requires replication. Your experiments have to be done in a way where other scientists can take them and pick them apart. And if they replicate what you've done, then that gives more power to your conclusions. And the more that that's done, the more valid the conclusion becomes. And so these um, experiments about dreams being related to learning have some, seem to have some scientific validity. They also have some intuitive validity with me because I find that if I'm studying something that's really difficult, a few years ago I took a programming course and some of the problems were very difficult to solve and I solved this one particular difficult problem in a dream. I woke up, I knew the answer, I wrote it down and it turned out to be correct. So I really think that dreams are related to learning. All this other strange imagery that we have have fun with it. I don't know if it means anything or not, but neither do these people that are putting out these lists about what dreams are supposed to mean. Dreams can mean whatever you want them to mean, and maybe they're associated a little bit with learning. That's about what we know about dreams. Hey, I'm traveling to the United States in uh, three more days. Today is July 4th. Happy Independence Day to all my American viewers. And uh, I celebrated uh, Independence Day this morning. I had breakfast with my British friend, Blockchain. I told him uh, we forgave them for taxation without representation and thanked them for the Beatles. Uh, so I guess that's how I 
celebrated the 4th of July today, or Independence Day. Uh, the United States Declaration of Independence Day was announced on July 4th in 1776, for those of you who may not be aware of it. So I'm traveling back home for the first time in over two years, actually 26 months. I'm really excited about it. Get to see my family back in the States. I, I really miss them. I have grandkids and two daughters and sons-in-laws and a whole bunch of people and friends that I can't wait to go see. So I'm very excited about that. And I'm leaving here Wednesday night in three days. And I was noodling around on YouTube and I was looking for videos of people who have traveled out of Suvana Boom Airport on an international flight to just check to see if there were some things that I should be aware of that I might not be aware of. We're still traveling in COVID times and I didn't find anything. So I'm going to do a video on that just for informational purposes for anybody who's planning on traveling out of, uh, out of Bangkok. That should be up by the weekend. I'm going to film it on the way out. I have a layover in uh, Seoul, Korea, in China Airport. I'm flying on Korean Air, and uh, I'll have three hours there, so I may be able to upload it there, but probably not. The internet usually sucks in airports, so uh, we'll see. If not, I'll have it up the following day after my 20-hour flight and a nap and my COVID vaccine, which I'm getting almost immediately after landing. And uh, so if you're still here, thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next time.